Good evening, everybody. V Music Fan is back, bringing smiles to the faces, knowledge to the people, and most importantly, music to the masses. And I am back with another R U N. Tonight, we are taking a look at Tyler the Creator's newest album entitled Igor. Tyler the Creator is an American rapper, singer, songwriter, record producer, music video director, and fashion designer from Ladera Heights, California. Previous albums include Bastard in 2009, Goblin in 2011, Wolf in 2013, Cherry Bomb in 2015, and Flower Boy in 2017. Now, for years I had heard about Tyler, the creator, though my first dive into him wasn't until his previous album, Flower Boy. From what I had known of him, I heard that he was a very controversial rapper in the game, first off with his more dark kind of more on the metal side sound in terms of rapping, but also with very controversial lyrics and at points bashing certain communities like the LGBT community. So when I had came into listening to Flower Boy, I was expecting something a little bit like that. My curiosity got the best of me and I wanted to finally figure out all the hype to Tyler the Creator, but I was blown away and very surprised by Flower Boy, as a lot of people were. This was a very vulnerable and very introspective Tyler talking about things like depression, isolation, suicidal thoughts, wanting somebody, as well as him trying to understand his bisexuality. He had finally come out as bisexual around that time of Flower Boy. I was blown away by that. I was blown away by the more jazzy and R&B influenced arrangements for some very beautiful and very interesting arrangements. I loved the album so much that it was in my top 10 of that year, as well as my favorite rap album of 2017. Yes, even better than Damn, in my opinion. Not that Damn is a bad album. I had it one spot underneath. It's just... I think the, the cohesiveness of Flower Boy was a little bit better than Vim. Hearing that he was dropping a new album this year, I was interested to take a look to see if he was going to stick with the sound of Flower Boy or if he was going to go in a different direction and if so, what it was. Well, I am here to tell you that he has gone in a different direction and a little bit of a warning. If you were looking for another rap album, this is not really what you would be looking for. Yes, he does rap on Songs like I Think, as well as Running Out of Time, New Magic One, A Boy's a Gun, Puppet, What's Good, Gone Gone, and I Don't Love You Anymore. But usually it's only like a verse, if anything. A lot of this album is a more current R&B album. The idea here is this album takes a lot of R&B, jazz, funk, soul, Motown ideas, and brings it into a more lo-fi sound and a more current sound with the, the use of electronics and lo-fi and other things of that sort. Not only that, but Tyler is also singing on a lot of these songs. And what exactly is he singing about? Well, let's dig into this concept a little bit. My take of this concept is it is a love triangle between Tyler someone that Tyler is infatuated with, and an ex-girlfriend of this other person. And from what I'm seeing, there's a couple of different perspectives throughout here. I might be wrong about this, and if you have your own opinions, of course, let me know in the comments below, but here is my take. We start off with Igor's theme, which has Lil Uzi Vert and Solange on there, and it builds this idea of what the sound is going to be, as well as what the content's going to be about. With the lyrics of riding around town, I'm going to feel this one, it's going to be putting you in a very emotional place, letting you know that this is going to be a very introspective album, kind of like what Flower Boy is. Tyler, the creator, is still exploring his bisexuality on this album, especially being more open with Flower Boy. He's showing the openness here as well. We get to Earthquake next, which is, from what I can tell, I think it's from the perspective of the person who has the ex-girlfriend and him t saying, don't leave, it is my fault, and wanting to have this person there, even though this person messed up a lot with the ex-girlfriend. From there, we get to I Think, which is Tyler meeting this person and not sure if he wants to be vulnerable with this person because of his insecurities with his sexuality, but eventually 
caving in and finding out that he wants to be in love with this person. Next, we get exactly what you run from you end up chasing, which is among the first interlude parts with comedian Jared Carmichael. And he's, of course, talking about as you try to run away from something, it's eventually what is going to be coming back to you. And that could be him running away from these feelings for this guy and eventually knowing that it might, in the end, chase back to this person. Running out of time, I think, is from the perspective of the person that Tyler's infatuated with and the ex-girlfriend. And them two noticing that things are falling apart in the relationship, but trying to keep things together, which never really works. As this is going on, new magic wand happens, and it's Tyler talking to this guy, being like, I can change your life forever, I can be there for you, but you gotta get this other person out of here, and if you won't do it, I will, and I will also get you out of here. It's trying to be like, let's change this, let's start something new and something better. Then we get to A Boy Is A Gun, and where Tyler is still coming to grips with his bisexuality and is wanting to be with this guy, but also it's kind of like the cat and mouse of it, wanting to be there and wanting to be with this person, but also knowing that he might not be good for him. And finally, we get to Puppet, which is Tyler coming to grips with the idea that he is just a puppet to this person. Even though Tyler confesses how he feels to this person, he realizes that what he feels is never going to be reciprocated by this other person and just realizing that doing all these things for this person just to hope that they would fall in love with them isn't going to work and that's where i think the the ego idea comes in i think there's like a dual nature here so like if we go to the frankenstein story or the frankenstein idea you also know about dr frankenstein's assistant igor someone who is a little bit more disheveled and is basically a person that doesn't really have a lot of free will of its own, but is in, instead enamored by the work of Dr. Frankenstein, even if Dr. Frankenstein doesn't treat Igor the nicest way. This is where the comparison goes to Tyler. He hasn't fully accepted his bisexuality, and from here, he still feels a little bit like a monster. He is Igor. He is the monster that he feels. He is also the assistant that looks up to the doctor and tries to find any way to please this person in order for something to work. And he finally realizes this. And from there, you get to what's good, which is him realizing who he was as an Igor and trying to now find a better self-image, a better self-worth for himself. And he finally gets there on what's good. Following that, you get Gone Gone Thank You, which is a two-parter that is him getting rid of this person and being happy for the memories but also realizing that this person's not worth it and it's not worth it to waste breath and time and memories on this person and then thank you is being thankful for the times that he got but also realizing he can be better off alone and maybe not have to be in love right now at the moment until in order to find himself then we get to of course i don't love you anymore which is finally getting over that person and then are we still friends? Which is, I think, a very interesting ending because to me it's a little bit over ended because even though he doesn't want to love this person, he still wants to have that person in his life. It makes for this kind of ambiguous ending of like, yeah, can we still be friends after all of this? Even though there was, maybe wasn't even a relationship to begin with, it was just an infatuation of one person to another without any of uh, the reciprocation. Overall, I think it's a very interesting and in-depth look at not just relationships or even infatuation and the reciprocation of them, but it's also a look at something that Tyler is still dealing with. Again, going back to Flower Boy, there was a lot of stuff about depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, isolation, coming to grips with his bisexuality, and who's to say that he has actually came to grips with those? So being more open and letting someone into to his life and realizing that that person's not good for them and how they treat them, that also can mess with you and, and that messes with your idea of your identity. So overall, I think the lyrics are a very interesting concept. Musically though, this is where it's a little bit hit or miss for me. So I do like a majority of the songs. There's a lot of interesting 
jazz ideas on here. There's a lot of interesting Motown motifs and great samples just in a lo-fi sound. And for the most part, they do work. What's Good, my favorite song on the album, is this very dark song comparatively to everything else. But it also does have a little bit of jazz tinge at times, as well as this really interesting bridge part where it's this like very staccato electronic part and it just shows that great darkness that's here. And that's a great way of showing him opening up and finally feeling free to be himself again. A couple of other particular highlights I think is also another one of these darker ones and one of the times where Tyler is rapping and he does a fantastic job on here. I love his flow on the first verse and then goes into this interesting like electronic piano solo over some nice two five one progressions makes for a lovely interlude before going back into the idea solange is on this one she does a good job on the course next up we got earthquake a really good single i'm not a huge fan of necessarily the verse parts and play work Hardy on here kind of worthless but the choruses are on fire and it has so much passion and so much emotion in there even though tyler isn't the best singer this is one of the better parts of him singing. Running out my favorites, we got A Boy Is A Gun, Running Out Of Time, and Are We Still Friends. A Boy Is, is A Gun actually features a sample from Bound by the Ponderosa Turns, which also was sampled on Bound 2, Kanye West's song. But if you didn't know the song, you wouldn't be able to tell that this was the same song that it was sampled. I think it's probably because it's a different part of the song as well as it's not pitched up like it was in Bound 2. Speaking about Kanye, the flow that Tyler has on this song, very similar to Kanye's style, so this is kind of an homage to him. It is a little bit repetitive, but I like the sample that is used and I like the flow that Tyler has on this particular song. Running out of time, the sung parts aren't as hugely interesting. This is one of the times where Tyler pitches up his voice and it gets a little bit annoying, but I think as a, the arrangement goes on, it keeps building and keeps adding some interesting parts. And also there's a really nice chord progression in the bridge that is very similar to That's the Way of the World by Earth, Wind & Fire, which I happen to love. And then running out my favorites, we, again, Are We Still Friends? This Motown inspired song with an Al Green sample also has Pharrell on it. It's a nice way of ending this album. It does have some of Tyler's better singing on here. And <laughs> I do like the, don't say goodbye, smell you later. From here though, I think that the rest of the album does still have some problems. Gone Gone Thank You is a decent song with Cielo Green, but the problem that I have with it is this is where he pitches up again and kind of speeds up the, the, the music to this like kind of fast paced Motown song that I'm just not a huge fan of. You don't need to pitch up Cielo Green's parts either. He has a fantastic range, so I feel like this is kind of a waste. There are some interesting parts in the interlude, and the outro is not bad, but for a six minute song, half of it being that sped up idea, not worth it to me. Igor Singh sets up the album pretty well, but again, another problem with pitching. A little Uzi Vert's vocals are a little bit under, and when Solange comes in, it has this little tense moment because she's a little bit more on pitch than he is. New Magic One, not bad, it has Santi Gold and Jesse Wilson on there. I like the chorus a lot more than I like the verses, but that chorus is fire. And then we get to kind of my, my least favorites. I don't love you anymore. Not a bad rap, but I don't like the chorus. It's very grating. I don't love you anymore. It just really high pitched up. Not nearly interesting. Puppet has a nice Motown idea. And honestly, Tyler is fire on here in terms of his rapping. But I think the arrangement itself isn't that hugely interesting. And Kanye West has a part, but it's barely noticeable. If for some reason the mix on that song has the, the music up so much louder than Kanye that you can barely tell that he is there, let alone know when his verse ends. And then the interlude, not really much. It's a 14 second interlude, so nothing to see there. I think the concept is great. And I think the storytelling on here is really good. It's cool to see him continue with a narrative idea, even if I think some of the songs on Flower Boy are better, and I still think Flower Boy is a little bit better in general. There's some really good lo-fi ideas on here, and I love 
how the jazz influences on the lo-fi do come out. However, I do see problems with this album, particularly when Tyler Crater pitches the voices up or speeds up some of these arrangements to some very weird places. I think when that happens, like Gone Gone, or like I Don't Love You Anymore, or Running Out of Time, even Earthquake at times, when he pitches the voices up or speeds the arrangement up, it gets a little bit grating at times, but for the most part, these songs are solid enough where those parts don't destroy it. And at times, those parts are interesting. It's just when the arrangement itself doesn't work, then you got some problems. But overall, a very interesting journey and one that if you are a Tyler the Creator fan, I do think that you should go on. I think this particular Relationship Breakup album does do some new ideas. First off with the love triangle, second with more talking about bisexuality and that mix of liking someone, but that someone like is missing their ex-girlfriend. I think that is a twist on this idea that I haven't heard before, so I do enjoy that. Just know that it is going to be lo-fi, there isn't as much rap, and at points some of these ideas can get grating. But if you're willing to spend 35 minutes, 40 minutes on an album like this, definitely give it a shot. I think it is still a very promising album from Tyler the Creator, and I'm curious to see where he can even go from here. But we'll probably find out in 2021. So that is my time. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you love or hate this album and your reasons why. Let me know also other albums from 2019 that you would like me to review. Share this with your friends and most importantly subscribe to my channel so that you can see more videos like this and help support me on my journey to make bigger and better content. So Wednesday I'll be back with another Are You In? Until then this is Music Fan and I'm signing off.